Hi, boys and girls. For those of you who watch my video channel, you probably recognize this phone, my high-tech Walmart $15 flip phone. Amazing device. You can actually make and receive calls on it. And I just got a top secret priority message telling me that I'm back on the A-list. We'll be getting a lot of expensive cars real soon. In fact, I got one coming today. So let's go out and see what they delivered. Well, it looks like I'm really on the A-list. A 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLE 450. Looks pretty good, especially in my driveway. All the neighbors are complaining about the cheap Korean cars I've been parking lately. They're threatening to throw me out of the neighborhood. This should bump me up on the status list a bit. So let's go cruise the hood and show it off. Every time I come to the country club in a cheap Korean car, all the valets ignore me. Actually, they spit at me. But in a Mercedes-Benz, they all come a-running like vultures. I'm not going to give them any money. I'm just going to drive through just for laughs. While they're trying to chase me down, I should throw some quarters out on the street. You might be asking yourself how much this Mercedes-Benz costs. Well, it starts at 61000 bucks, but as always, there are a few options here and there to jack up the price. Just a wee bit. Let's take a look at a few. Well, we can start off with this leather trim. Not just regular leather. Magma leather trim, they say, for $2,990. Why can't they just round it off to 3000 Well, I don't know. That's just the way they do it. If you want the adjustable air suspension, which can raise and lower the height, gives you comfort mode, sport, sport plus, that's $8,090 extra. Again, why can't they just round it off to eight grand? I don't know, but that's how much it costs. This blue paint job called Lunar Blue Metallic, $720 bucks extra. For an extra $180, you get cup holders that are heated or cooled. Now, you might think that's kind of frivolous, but actually that's pretty useful. Especially if you're carting people around your vehicle you don't like too much. Um, let's say you have a mother-in-law tagging along. She just went into the Mini Mart and bought a big icy drink with lots of ice. Well, you just click on the heat switch. Her drink melts in a couple of minutes. She'll never know why. That's worth $180. What about that annoying carpool buddy you pick up in the morning? He sticks his hot coffee in here, you hit the air conditioning ice mode, his coffee's freezing in a couple of minutes, I'll never know why. Again, I think this is a pretty cool option. And for $320, you have the air freshener package. You stick this bottle of perfume in the little slot, and it allows your vehicle to smell like a $5 whore. <laughs> okay. I'm exaggerating. I just didn't really like the scent that was in this. I had to pull it out. However, I found a little box with optional scents that might work a little better. But for now, I'm just going to leave this unplugged. If you look at the door panels, you'll find these little bright yellow gadgets. Actually, they're safety vests, so when you break down, you can put this on and people won't run you over. Oops. I'm going to show you the window sticker so you can take a look at all the options and the prices. And let's do a close-up. Alright, starting at 61150. I won't read this off. You can see it on the screen and you can freeze it if there's something you want to look at in particular. Lots of stuff here. Lots of prices. Oh, what's this? There you go. $96,320 plus tax, license, and dealer dock fee. So we're looking at hundred grand here. The total options came to $35,170, just in case you're interested and don't want to do the math yourself. Now that we've covered the cost, the second thing that you need to know, and the most important is learning how to drive the thing. If you think you're just going to jump in, start driving off, it doesn't work that way. Not in a Mercedes. The controls are rather odd and complicated. 
If you think you're going to learn reading the manual, forget it. The translation in here is kind of odd. I just take this and toss it. What you need to do is pack yourself a nice lunch. Get yourself a six pack of liquid drinks. Alcohol preferred. Sit in this vehicle for several hours and push every button you can find over and over again until you find out what everything does. That's the only way to do it, folks. I've been doing this a while and the most efficient. Before you get in and learn the controls, let me give you a couple tips. Now, most German cars have a control knob on the center console to pull up all the information on the info screen. Mercedes has gone to touchpad. Touch this, and this is what you get. My advice is to forget this. You can use it when you're sitting still. When you're driving, it just doesn't work too well. Your best bet, touch the screen. Like so. And number two, you have a control button on the steering wheel here. Press this. All kinds of useful information comes up. How do you move it? Well, that brings us to this tiny little button here. You move your thumb left and right. And that's the secret. And once you've learned to move it left and right, there are other tricks. If you move it up and down, I just saved you about an hour and a half of time here. The gauge cluster has many types to choose from at the push of a button. Here's the classic mode, the sport mode. Progressive mode, the understated mode, I would say that's understated, I don't think I like that one, and standard, take your pick. Every time I turn the vehicle on I get this, I guess those $300 an hour service people can't wait to get me down there. And part me from my money as they'll be doing if you drive an expensive German car one way or another by the way for all you folks out there complaining that infotainment screens are too small nowadays well this is one complete infotainment screen about 20 inches wide if my measurements were correct you have nothing more to complain about as far as size goes size matters remember Here's your dynamic button. Gives you individual mode, Sport Plus, Sport, Comfort. Don't know what Curve is, Eco. Lots to choose from. And anyone paying an extra 35,000 bucks for options would expect massaging seats. Driver, passenger, Seat heating balance, side bolsters, lumbar. You have way too many settings to show you here, but there's an awful lot. Pardon the glare, but there's not much I can do about that. This is an off-road button of sort. I don't know what it does. Other than the fact it tells me it's not available. Guess what we'll to figure that out later. For those of you who like seeing a heads-up display in your windshield, you like this one. Very big and very bright, even in daylight. We'll be looking at this later in the dark. And speaking of the dark, as we do in all my videos, we'll take these headlights out at night, see how they perform. Bird, will you shut up? These birds follow me all over town, if you've seen my last four videos. Go on the west side of town, they're there, east side of town. I guess they just like me. It's dark enough. Let's take these lights out and see what they do. Look pretty bright to me. And they're a low beam. Shut up, bird. Bird follows me all over town, even at 2 o'clock in the morning. 
There, that's better. He finally shut up. Here we have the low beam on the building 100 feet away. Extremely bright, a bit low in height. Put on the high beam. No shortage of light now. I think for the price tag on this car, we should expect swivel headlights that turn with the steering wheel. I think they're turning with the wheel. Not as radically as others I've driven. Honestly, I can't tell if they're turning with the wheel or not. I'll have to take it on a curved road. See what happens. Here we have the high beams on the building 300 feet away. Plenty of light here. Good height. Good wide spread. Lights up the whole countryside. Go to low beam. Goes out around 275 feet. More than adequate for city driving or backcountry roads. Here's what the cabin looks like in the dark, in case you're curious. Got the disco lights running along the edge. Here's what the heads-up display looks like in the dark. Very large, very bright. If you like these type of things, you'll be very happy. As far as myself, it's a bit too obvious for me. Now, if I was going to launch an infrared missile at a target 10,000 yards away, this would be a very good aiming point. But we're not going to do that tonight, so I think I'm going to turn this off. The navigation lights up pretty good in the dark. Pretty big, too, but I see we have two navigation screens. The one in the middle, and the one in between the instrument cluster. Very nice. And I see we have a performance panel showing what type of horsepower and torque we're putting out. I didn't even know that was there. Lights up in the dark pretty good too. Another nifty graphic. Well, if you're not in the mood for music, there's other things on the screen to entertain you when you're driving somewhere. And again, lights up very nice in the dark. When it comes to lighting up road sirens on backcountry roads, these brights definitely do their job. That's about one mile away. The only negative side, if you're driving in the low beams and going into dips, the headlights have a way of disappearing after around 50 or 60 feet. So on backcountry roads, you'll have to keep the brights on, like so. The question we had earlier, are these headlights swiveling with the steering wheel as it turns? It appears so, but it really doesn't matter because the headlight output is so wide, it really doesn't matter if they're turning or not. We're really lighting up the countryside on either side. Oh! Almost got some rabbit stew there. Either way, these are excellent lights. Very widespread. No problem in corners at all. I do have this in the Sport Plus mode, which means we're going along very briskly and taking corners. Very nice. Really hugging the road. There aren't too many SUVs that can take corners like this really hugging the road. I'm having a lot of fun here.
By the way, this Benz does have paddle shifters on the steering wheel if you want to shift the gears manually, which you definitely will want to do on a road like this. By the way, if you like driving hands-free, you can do that. I don't have my hands on the steering wheel. It's a feature that Mercedes has a solution to a non-existent problem because why would I want to drive without my hands on the wheel? Why does anybody want to drive with their hands off the wheel? I don't get it. I guess I'm just a low-tech guy. I think I'm going to put my hands back on the wheel. If you look under the hood, instead of the usual V6, Mercedes switched over to a nice sophisticated inline six-cylinder putting out 3 liters and 362 horsepower. That includes the 48 volt mild hybrid system that's down there somewhere. This is all hooked up to a 9-speed automatic transmission and the 4-matic all-wheel drive slash 4-wheel drive system. Fuel economy is rated at 19 MPG in the city, 24 on the highway. We'll be taking this out, racking up some miles to see what it gets in the real world. You would think there would be a sticker around here telling you what type of fuel to use. Usually it says premium 91 octane only, but nothing here. I'm using premium just in case. By the way, if you get a dark color like this, you're going to be washing it quite a bit if you're in the desert. Like every day to keep it clean. Here's what the camera system looks like, in case you're curious. Driving all the warning radar systems crazy. They'll probably overheat and short out and then blow up. But at least I have a lot of water to put the fire out. We drove to our garage and test facility. Let's do some driving and see how this thing runs. Rack up some fuel economy figures too. All German cars have electric steering now instead of hydraulic, but they just don't have the feel of hydraulic like the Japanese and Koreans have been able to do. But if you put this vehicle in the Sport or Sport Plus mode, the steering does have a bit more stiffening up and better feel. You'll just have to play with these settings and see what works for you. If you set this vehicle in the Sport Plus mode, stiffens the ride up a bit, gives you better handling, which means better cornering ability. At least for an SUV. No complaints here. As you're doing on my videos, Ron takes the speed bumps to evaluate the suspension performance on impacts. As soon as these trespassers get out of my way. And we will be cheating a bit, putting the vehicle in comfort mode. Speed bump number one. Pretty comfortable. Here comes number two at 22 miles per hour. Comfortable enough. Number three. The big nasty one coming. Didn't see much difference. Let's try that again in the Maximum Sport Plus setting. I need to clean this glass. Okay, Maximum Sport Plus. Speed bump number one, 21 miles per hour. Oh, a bit stiffer than comfort, yes siree. Number two. Number three, coming up 25 miles per hour. And the nasty one. Oh! Sport Plus definitely works if you're interested in the best handling, but for ride comfort, that's why they call it the comfort mode. This is definitely a powerful engine, but with two and a half tons of mass being pulled, as well as the four-wheel drive system, you're not going to be smoking any rubber. 
when you're running 0 to 60. Let's do a quick run. Pretty nice once they get going. One more for prosperity. Those are done in the Sport Plus mode, by the way. I didn't clock the time, but you see it on your screen if you have a stopwatch. You can do it yourself. According to the car's computer, for the past 1,430 miles, we've averaged 20.5 mpg. Averaging 24 miles per hour, I guess there was a lot of city driving being done. I wasn't driving, I don't know. We're going to set our odometer at zero, see what type of fuel economy we get on our highway trip coming up. Approximately 100 miles. Stay tuned. If you put the bins in the comfort mode, it's definitely a smooth highway cruiser. It would be a bit better if I had more fuel in the steering, but we can't have everything. If you had everything, where would you put it all? And the heads-up display is very visible in the bright sunlight. I'm still trying to find out how to turn it off. I'll find out eventually. I don't like looking at this, but if you like looking at this stuff, you'll definitely be happy. It's definitely noticeable. We're coming to the end of our trip. Already racked up over 100 miles. We'll pull over and see what the fuel economy figures say. We are doing a lot of high speed passing and slightly uphill runs, so. I don't think our fuel economy is going to be too good, but then again, you never know. Well, the EPA claims 24.0. We got 22.8. Can't complain about that. We just finished another highway trip, over 100 miles. Our turtle today, 100 miles freeway, 50 miles city, another 100 miles freeway. Total 252 miles in 4 hours, 46 minutes. And there's our fuel economy for today. 22.4 overall. I think that's 80% freeway and 20% city or... Eh, close enough. And good enough. So what's my take on this Mercedes after a week of driving? Well, it is a good solid rig. Strong engine. Excellent handling. Strong brakes. Nice comfortable ride. Of course, I had the optional $8,000 suspension package. Overall, I was very pleased. Of course, when you take on 37 grand worth of options, terms like value and practical kind of go out the window. When we get to 100,000 bucks, well, I'm told most of these are leased anyway. I can see why. Hey, if you can afford it, go for it. Here are some links to other videos we've done on expensive German machinery. Just click and watch.